All right, everyone, welcome back to 123 Chess, the place where we review, analyze, and improve. And uh, my name's Luke. And I'm Tom. And we're here to review our game seven uh, with the Sicilian defense, uh, the first time for us in this format. And in case you haven't yet, go ahead and check out our video on our analysis method. But we're use, we use that to do an in-depth analysis of this. We didn't just consult the computer engine quickly. Um, so this, uh, this session will be essentially uh, the product of that endeavor. And so uh, I will let Tom kick it off since you were playing as white and we'll have at it. All right, so I kicked it off with an E4 opening. This is my preferred uh, start for white. And Luke responded with the Sicilian. Um, we have gone, uh, uh, we've gone over several openings if you've been following along with this channel. Um, and uh, this is one that uh, Luke and I both indicated that we were a little uncomfortable with, uh, but we see it a lot. Um, and so we just figured we would dive in and take a little bit deeper analysis. Um, so far, this is the basic Sicilian game that I uh, typically play. Um, and Luke, you can chime in here, uh, but I think this was the second Sicilian game we played, right? Yeah, I think this is the second one we played against each other formally. Okay, because when, when, uh, when this pawn comes out, um, uh, this has not been a typical response for me. Um, I do know that when I was running the analysis of this, the engine actually really likes uh, dropping the knight here. Yeah. Um, I, I, mean, I, can see um, I, I feel like that's probably pretty normal for me, um, but it's certainly a little bit more passive. Um, uh, I liked this because um, it's, it's obviously uh, pretty well defended, and I, I figure it's going to set me up for um, some strength on the, on the queen side. Um, and just exploring something new. Obviously, this, uh, uh, this knight can tough and that on. And this move. So, if uh, you again, if you've been following along, I uh, when I first started uh, this series, um, I was doing a lot of like Hulk smash, uh, you know, blasting as fast as I could, trying to formulate some sort of attack as fast as I could. This felt really defensive for me, um, but I was just looking ahead at um, this bishop move, and I thought, you know, I really don't want to see that bishop come out there and pin my knight. Um, because that, you know, that gets into all sorts of responses that I need to do now to, to defend this pawn and, and gives Luke some initiative there. So uh, I, liked, I liked doing that. Um, so this, uh, if I remember correctly, was the first move that broke from um, the Masters games in the database. Yeah, I think so. Yep. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, it was interesting because when I ran the chess engine, because I thought, well, if this is first move running from or breaking from the Masters games, what are the chances this is an error? And uh, I was happy to see that the chess engine said this was an excellent move, uh, not best move. Um, I am, I can't remember off the top of my head what it was saying was best. I want to say like it was recommending this one. Yeah, it would probably be a bishop to either there or. Yeah, yeah, I think that's probably it. But I really like this one uh, because I was uh, seeing, I, I wanted to defend this pawn. So what I didn't like about this position is this pawn gets stuck behind my bishop. Uh, but I, I'm using it to defend this pawn now. Uh, 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 bishop is behind the pawn. But I'm using it to defend the pawn now to make it so I can advance my knight to this key square. Um, and then if the exchange happens, then my, my pawn's going to come and it's going to be threatening uh, this knight. Uh, so it's, it's going to be kicked. Um, so that was my idea. Uh, we get uh, development. I go ahead with my plan. And um, uh, Luke castles. Um, I castle in response. You know, I mean, I did give some consideration to taking this bishop. Uh, I liked that idea, um, uh, but I figured uh, with uh, it being surrounded as it is. <laughs> you could take I it if in, you want to still. <laughs> I was in no rush to do it. So 
So I, I had I had plenty of time, you know, still thinking once again if he ended up capturing that, I'm I'm still liking that plan of uh, moving on. And he takes. Um, so there we go. And then this move uh, really surprised me. And uh, I don't want to spoil Luke's fun here because we did discuss this uh, uh, when we were going over our initial analysis uh, as to um, merit of it. We had discussed, I think it was this one as a spot to move that night. Um, uh, but the engine actually did like the uh, the spot that he moved it back into the uh, into the back row, um, even though it's kind of resetting the uh, the game for him. Yeah, it looks weird, but yep. So I'm um, just developing my bishop. Um, I remember this move uh, surprising me a little bit in the game, though I I don't know why it surprised me. Um, but seeing the F, the, the F pawn come out, I was like, oh yeah, that's right. And my logic, which I can go into on my turn, but my logic was, you know, the D five pawn is there. I don't intend to move it or take it. And, uh, so, and I still have my light square bishop on the board to protect that diagonal if I need to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that we discussed too, is that it's, it's, uh, we're always paying attention to when we're when we're opening up that uh, that line uh, that diagonal when the king's there. Um, uh, the your opponent's bishop of that same that same color. So in this case, let's wear bishop. Um, and that's why Luke is referencing that pawn here is because even if I got that bishop there, well, that pawn's not moving, and so my pawn's not moving. It's a really great it's a really great great blocker. Um, so it makes that it makes that move very secure. Um, let's see this. Um, I get my half pawn to the action, um, attacking from the middle. Um, and I am really liking, I, I, I do really remember thinking at this point in time of the game, I like my, my uh, bishop placements a lot. Um, you know, I've got, I've got these lines that I'm, I'm tearing down. Um, it's giving me a lot of nice control. Um, I, I feel like my my pieces are pretty well positioned at this point. Um, but Luke moving his uh, knight there is the first time where okay, I gotta, I've gotta, I've gotta kick it because again, I don't want to lose that bishop. Um, uh, and this is this is pretty pretty darn good still. Um, but here is where we start to see um, uh, Luke taking the initiative uh, to a very large extent. Um, getting the queen in the game. Uh, this one surprised me because I didn't think Luke would want to trade bishops. Um, you know, that was a piece he had developed. But that being said, my bishop was really strong. And I think that was something that I initially missed um, was that uh, Luke might want to trade them just because uh, how strong mine, mine was. And I did, since we talked earlier about it, I did check it against the engine and uh, the taking of your bishop was actually my best move there. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, and uh, so, so I recaptured obviously with the queen and I, I mean, I, my logic was I'm, you know, I, I still have these same diagonals covered now, I'm just covering them with the queen. Um, uh, but what you end up, uh, what we see happening here is, you know, getting the name of the game, bishop, because uh, a lot of this is starting to focus on this pawn, um, sort of this pawn uh, advancing. Um, it's pretty strong, backed up by the, uh, the queen, the rook, uh, it's got a knight here for support, uh, and maybe even this bishop, right? Um, um, and so I did this, and this, uh, which I don't think we spotted in our initial analysis, but this, uh, according to the engine, was my first mistake, uh, which is actually pretty good for me. I'm happy. I'm happy to go up to uh, move 19 um, uh, before uh, making any mistake. Um, but yeah, this, not, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, but what we did identify. Uh, last week was, you know, I got really hung up. So it wasn't necessarily this move uh, that we talked about uh, specifically, but I got really hung up on Luke's plan of attack um, uh, to the detriment of developing my own attack. Um, and so it's almost like the pendulum has kind of swung the other way uh, from what I was focusing on 
um, at the beginning of, of this endeavor uh, where I was saying, okay, I need to, I need to be more passive, be more passive, play a little bit more defensive. Um, and this was an opportunity for me to not play so defensive. Uh, what the engine recommended instead was moving my queen uh, to b3, which is pretty cool. I mean, there's the obvious attack on this pawn, um, but what took me a, a minute longer to realize is the really cool thing that it's doing is it's actually strengthening this pawn. And there's been a move that I've been uh, wanting to do, but I haven't been able to do it because of the undefended pawn. Um, and that's this one here. Yep. Um, this like huge move that Luke and I recognized later on in the game that I ended up doing in our game. But this, you know, in, in this line, the move ends up happening way sooner. Um, and so it's, it's grabbing that, it's grabbing that uh, initiative uh, a lot more. It's so much stronger at this point. Oh my goodness. Isn't it so much stronger? Yeah, uh, because, uh, because, you know, if that queen wasn't there, um, what would have ended up happening if we just went, you know, back to uh, here, right? If we go back to here, um, uh, if I were to do something like this right now, what ends up happening is we get this, uh, the bishop can take, I take with the pawn, and then he takes with the queen, and I'm down material. Um, uh, so that's why it was really pivotal to have that queen there. It's one more line of attack and additional benefit. It's actually lined up with his king, uh, on that white diagonal. So, and, and my queen's on the diagonal still. So, well, I mean, in, in here it is, but either way. But it was, it, that would, that would have been cool. Would have been, could have been. Uh, so that was the first move that really, uh, uh, I mean, th that was not game ending. I, I should say that, that move was not game ending. Um, and I, I do know that, uh, uh, Luke made, uh, an error or two. I didn't write that one down. I thought maybe, maybe, uh, you would Luke, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, we did discuss this move as to whether or not that one was appropriate. This was also identified as an excellent move. Um, by the engine. Um, it didn't have a problem with that. My, my logic here was I was just trying to um, advance that pawn. It, a little slow uh, for the attack, especially in comparison to what Luke ends up doing and developing here. Um, and so there's that move that we discussed where I do end up doing it. I'm attacking that rook. Um, I'm able to do it here once again uh, because uh, no, it's not, I, I'm sorry, it's not because I'm defending it with pawn, it's because now I'm defending it with the rook, uh, and that happened due to this exchange that took place uh, a couple moves ago. Um, and also, uh, moving this pawn did have the added benefit of if I had done that, if I had done that, uh, uh um, knight move before that pawn move, then I would have had hanging pawn. Which could have been captured with me. Yep. Um, so we get in here. Um, I was still feeling uh, pretty good at this point. Um, uh, this move was uh, with the plan of uh, this pawn advancing, um, just being able to formulate an attack here. Um, Engine didn't have a problem with this. Engine still didn't have a problem with this. This is where things got really rocky, though. Um, it became really dynamic. It did become really dynamic. So my next move is forced. Uh, I need to go there. Um, and then this happens. Uh, and I thought this was really interesting once I ran this past an engine. So uh, at this point in time, uh, you know, Luke and I were like, I don't know, it feels like feels pretty good for black here. Uh, but the engine actually has it slightly favoring white in this position, which I thought was really cool. Um, I certainly did not capitalize that with my next move though, which was this. Um, and this was a mistake that ended up being uh, really, um, the it, it was the final mistake. This is, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Um, what should have been done, what, was recommended was this. I didn't do it because I was really fearing this move here. Well, and it's so hard to play. Like, you know, and you guys, Tom and I played through this just for fun after. 
it is better for white, but you know how computers are. Like, it's really hard to play from that perspective because of the pin. It's so uh, this was the move that I was afraid of, but uh, I didn't need to be worried about that pin because had he gone there, I could have broken the pin by with a check, which right. was uh, one of my takeaways that I uh, discussed with Luke uh, when we were going over our initial analysis was a pin can be broken with a check. And that's something that we really need to take away and, and remember um, uh, because now, you know, he's forced to move his king. The queen is still being attacked, but now I can move my queen. Um, and that's, that's kind of what we're looking at there. Uh, that's what end up, ends up happening. Um, and, uh, you know, we followed that up with, uh, an attack on the rook. This is, this is just, uh, the computer plan effectively, right? And then withdrawing and coming back here, which I think, um, I, I actually was trying to figure this one out, Luke. I couldn't yeah. For how we played this game. I don't know if that's uh, something that you remember. Um, but I remember, uh, uh, I wish we had written it down. I remember. Um, yeah, I'm trying to remember. In, in this, uh, at some point in time, you brought your queen over. Oh, yeah. I think I brought her out right away. Right away? Yep. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I did. Because I remember last week, like, staring at this and being like, oh, geez, I don't know what to do at all. But the engine identified this as being a... Mistake? A mistake or a blunder. Wow. Hmm. Um, uh, but wanted King to move there. Oh, interesting. Which actually looks really nice, Well, that's right? so obvious. Like, why did I... <laughs> Okay, nice. It's so obvious. I, I don't know how I don't know how that was like entirely missed. Weird. Yeah, because I mean it breaks up. It, it, you know, I no longer have uh, this this pin uh, on my on my king. Uh, uh, the pin the pin knight. Yeah, um, yeah. No, this know, is I, great. I, again, I was still afraid of this, but I still have that as an option. Yeah, that's really strong. I mean, what can I do if I was playing as black at this point? Yeah, not much. And now with and now with the pin no longer existing, because that was one of the things that really like made it hard for me to uh, really like get you into a mating pattern there. Yeah. Right? When, we when we did the analysis on this last time, um, but now that the the knight is no longer pinned, I can get it involved as well. And I mean, I I think that it'd be really um, You'd have a lot of trouble here for black, and without even know without knowing what like the best move is, I could even see a capture. I was just thinking that Tom, I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta take that knight. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly but what I, I would do here. I don't know, but I mean, it, it looks, it looks like you might, you might need to at this point. It, but this does not look good for black once, once the uh, queen moves in. Or once the not king a, yeah, not at all, not at all. So. So, uh, yeah. Uh, just to more or less to, uh, give you an idea of how the game uh, continued. Um, so this move here, um, I took, this was also a blunder. Um, the game was likely already lost here, um, th but this is where the mating pattern really uh, starts uh, because we get this. Um, uh, and I say it wasn't, it wasn't entirely, uh, so, so this happened and um, I don't see my altered line here. But I, I believe at this point in time, uh, my correct move was just to move my king over. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And the thing I, I was, at this point in time, I was thinking, um, well, I can't do this because he's going to take my pawn and then he's going to be able to advance it and get a queen. Well, I skipped. <laughs> you can't just take my pawn because i've got this attack going already yeah um, you know i mean he can retreat the queen up there but once i move my king over again now i've got an attack on his king or his queen and so once again he can't take that pawn and ultimately i end up pretty safe the, i don't want to be in this position this is not a good position <laughs> um but the game isn't entirely lost in this oh. position uh, but once I but once I do what I did, I uh, took the pawn. It, it's pretty much over. 
the game ends with um, me just getting this dance happening, losing all the pieces until we get here. Uh, no, no, we didn't get there. We got to this. Once my queen was taken by his queen, it was game over. I resigned at this point. Uh, but that was my real analysis. Like I said, uh, my big takeaway was um, uh, a check can break a, um, a, a check can break your uh, pin. So be sure to watch out for those when you're like, oh, I can't move there because I've got a pin. Um, and I don't know. I mean, the the that that king. Oh, the uh, other big takeaway. Mm -hmm. was, don't focus so much on your opponent's attack that you lose sight of your own attack. Yep. Um, Good. Then I, I don't know how I missed that that king move. I guess recognize <clears throat> your king in defense. I, no better way to say it than that. Sometimes uh, the simplest or the hardest, though, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. To find. But those that those that was really my analysis. So um, without further further ado, I will. Uh, I will pass it along to Luke. The board. Okay, fantastic. So, jumping into mine now. Um, okay, so uh, let's kick it off. I don't usually play the Sicilian. I'm trying to get more familiar with it since uh, percentage-wise, it's the vast majority of chess games, literally, uh, with E4 openings. Uh, okay. I usually, at this point, I'll either... I'll either uh, decide to push this pawn or pop the knight there. I went with the knight. And then here we come to one of the most, like right here, this is the open Sicilian, which is super popular. This is the most popular opening in chess um, at the highest level and many below. Okay, so at this point, um, I decided to go, this is not something I normally do because you have this kind of backward pawn that you have to deal with. But the idea is you're kicking the knight you're develop, you know, you're opening up your center with tempo, and uh, you know this knight, you know my knight here is guarded by two pawns right now, and there's no real dangers uh, that that my opponent can exploit this backward pawn yet. And Tom you know mentioned, what? I think my co I think my common one there, now that I think about it, is actually capturing the knight. But I hate it. I hate capturing the knight there because when you capture the knight, that B. Uh, <laughs> A B pawn can recapture, and now you've just reestablished that more dominance in the center. Yeah, and to be fair, I, I can't tell you this for sure, Tom. I'm sure it is probably a variation, but part of me almost wonders if that actually is an inaccuracy. Um, yeah. Because the whole point is black gets a really strong center, and it's really hard for white the rest of the game. I, I, I used to play the Sicilian when I was not as experienced as we are now, and I can tell you, I had that exact thing happen a million times. And when that happened, I had a pretty sweet game as black. So oh, yeah. you get the um, three pawns in the center. It seems great. Yep. So, but yeah, good comment. Um, so yeah, Tom mentioned how he went back there um, instead of the typical here or here. Um, and, uh, you know, not bad. So then we're trying something new here, uh, getting my other night developed. <clears throat> okay. So this is my first critical moment that I looked at. Why? Because I saw a concern here. I still haven't advanced this pawn. I recognize that very soon Tom is going to, um, he's going to basically have the ability to plop this knight in here. Um, I would like to get my bishop out, which I thought here would be logical. Um, but the problem is, as you can see, if I do that and he places it here, then he can take that bishop whenever he wants, as we saw in our game. And so the only way to prevent that for sure is to take his knight with mine. The problem with that is after I take, then he takes with his pawn. Um, now this knight has to be kicked back somewhere, and I really didn't want to deal with that. Um, so basically, you know, I didn't know how to deal with this uncomfortable knight plopping into that outpost. And, um, but what I didn't realize is from this position, is there a stronger move that solves both of these problems with the knight going here and with also anything in regards to like a pin uh, or the knight plopping in here and then over here, all of those kinds of things that all are based on my uh, backward pawn um, can be solved in one simple move, Tom, that I totally missed. And that move is right here. 
Now it's funny too, because like, okay, here's what I saw in my mind. I saw, okay, if I move that Bishop there, yeah, it would give a temporary pin, but I'm like, oh, but then he can just kick it or he can just prevent it. Um, but either one of those two moves, um, as I'm going to show now are not good. They're much better for black. And so it's because I didn't see down the line enough. I didn't look, I didn't calculate the, uh, the series of moves after that enough to realize that that move by my bishop was the best move in this position. And so let's look at them, shall we? So next, let's, let's look at this one first, where the bishop comes out. Uh, again, this looks like it kind of neutralizes the whole threat. But here's the problem. Even though, and Tom, this is again where I'm like having to wrestle with the concept that we're growing in with knights and bishops. Because generally speaking, every intermediate player, including us, knows that bishops tend to be better than knights, especially if you have the bishop pair, um, unless it's a close position. Well, in this case, there's, there's a line that disregards that because of what happens. So what if I just take then after take, now in this position, we're left where I've created two threats. I'm threatening to capture a free pawn here. Um, and I'm also threatening to, oops, if I go back here. So I'm, even before I move here, um, the whole point is if I, I, I can take this and once this pawn comes up here, I have a strong center. So because I looked at this against the, the analysis or the engine analysis and uh, this move right here um, was the exchange variation. So after here, um, then basically no one would want to be in this position as white because uh, the, the fact that the bishop over here is going to be hit regardless of where this knight goes to on either one of those spots, I'm also ready to castle. Um, and it's either going to leave me, you know, up a pawn or, you know, controlling the center. Did you, did you have anything you wanted to add to that, Tom? Um, I don't know if you're going to go over other ones. Um, I mean, I definitely, I wouldn't move the pawn. I would definitely take the, oops, I would definitely do the capture. Yeah, yeah. So if I go back here, oops, sorry. So there, and then I take, like that, you were saying? Yep. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I actually... So I'm, I'm familiar with that line, um, which is why I, I don't really like putting my bishop there. So in this, uh, in this particular situation, what I would normally do is actually bring my queen out to f3. Which is the best move. Yeah. So um, because that, that guards this pawn, um, as well as putting pressure here once you bring your bishop in and get a pin on me. Yeah. And, and I guard, definitely didn't like that. I, I didn't like having the bishop come out, which is why on my next move. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that brings me to that one. So let's go over that one now. Um, because I think if it was me, I probably would have done that too. Um, so, okay. So again, I mentioned in this position, um, oops, going back here to, so this is the moment. And I mentioned how after the bishop comes here, uh, we just looked at if the bishop uh, tries to uh, unpin the knight. But now let's look at this one. The problem with this one is after I take your knight and then you take me back, we have a problem where now I snatch a pawn still. And now we have doubled pawns, isolated pawns. There is nobody who would agree, who would, you know, disagree with the fact that doubled isolated pawns and snatching a free pawn is definitely worth more than a bishop and you're attacking an undefended pawn right now exactly so i'm connected with it right away uh and i'm getting ready to control the center completely yeah. so it's you know again both of these lines demonstrate the fact that what i missed is the simple bishop move here that, that would have solved all of my problems with this square and this square and given me a very solid, it would have made a more dynamic game, which I don't prefer, but I would have been better if I was careful. Well, and, and I said bringing out that, that queen is what I, what I would have done. And, I, and to be fair, like I see this sort of like line a fair amount because this is really similar to what happens a lot in the scotch openings. Oh, that's true, it is. Yeah, and so um, that's, that's the line that I feel most comfortable with because it, it gives me that freedom. 
That being said, it's still relatively early to bring my queen out in the game. Um, and I usually, I mean, I like to be able to advance that F pawn and putting it there is stopping, it stops me from, you know, developing my F pawn in the future. Yeah. Um, I like having my queen attacking right down the center of the board and I lose that. So there are a lot of trade-offs that I, I have to have to deal with losing when I move my queen there, but that's, that, I still do prefer it. And then you also have things like, uh, the knight plopping in here. Um, and this move is, I mean, I would, I would guess pretty uncomfortable for white because not only like, I mean, okay, let's look at this line. You take, take now, guess what? This pin piece is now hit by a pawn too. So you, you know, you back, you, you try to kick my bishop. So I go back, kick my bishop again, and then take, take free pawn. And now your queen's there. But then after I do this, I, I, I don't know. I just feel like, well, Again, this is why one of the reasons why you see I do so many queenside castles too, Luke, right? Mm -hmm. this, this is my jam is queenside castles. So instead of taking there, um, oh, you know what? I can't. I was because I was gonna say I was gonna say I would move my um, uh, my black bishop out, but I can't uh, because the queen is being threatened. Currently. Exactly, it's a double threat. So I again, I really, really wouldn't prefer white in this line. Hmm, and it's all because of my knights that are placed on the ideal squares. Yeah, because I'm. I would have to. Uh, I would have to retreat. I would have to bring my my queen back here. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'm, you know. And then I'm probably going to either continue my development castle or, uh, or just simply snatch your knight with my knight, therefore doubling your pawns. But yeah, I mean, the thing is, is here, like, I, I mean, it's definitely still, I'm, I'm, I'm being put on the defense, which I think is kind of the hallmark of the Sicilian. The Sicilian is launching a counterattack. Mm -hmm. um, it creates an imbalance. Yes. And, and I think that's that's what's kind of neat here is, um, you know, and but but you know again what I like what I was saying, that's going to be kind of my next plan is to do something along those lines and then castle on the queen side. Exactly. But yeah, I I, I do like this. I think it's, I think it's really interesting. I was yeah. definitely afraid, I was definitely afraid of that bishop coming out. I know it's I I can't believe I missed it. That was that was a bummer. But so yeah, so that's. Uh, that's my first moment. And then um, as we continue, as the game really went, I decided to play this very passive move where I'm trying to prevent, I don't really know what this accomplished for me, Tom. Like your move when you moved your pond was a lot more purposeful. Mine was kind of like, uh, okay, like am I, this pond, I think it was with the idea that this pond was gonna advance, um, but it's still, yeah, I, I feel like it wasn't very strong. Okay, so we get to this point and, uh, then okay now my next critical moment is right here this is based on the same idea that i had before remember when i said that the knight i was afraid was going to plop in here and then be hitting both this knight as well as my bishop um, and you know so then i'd lose the bishop pair for one thing and then i also mentioned how if i take back with my knight well then your pawn's going to take it and then once that happens this this guy's looking terrible and after I go here, if you take and I'm there, I don't really like my queen over there. And then also, um, you know, so what I did is I actually retreated all the way back right here, <laughs> um, which again, the computer thought was the best move at that point. But it's again, look how look how much behind I am in development. I mean, this is not looking pretty. So uh, but here's here. This is why this moment is my critical moment, because once this happens, I already did all of the, you know, I already did the long thinking, you know, I spent a long time looking at my options and I decided that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and just castle and, um, and maybe bring my bishop, you know, here. But I said that, okay, I res I result, um, I resigned my bishop knowing that Tom was probably going to take it. And I was going to lose the bishop here, but it's pretty close. And I decided that's better than the alternative of allowing this pawn to come in and open up his bishop line and hit my knight. So what did I do? After we castled, 
I did exactly what I said I should not do. This is an example, and this is one of, gonna be one of my key takeaways, Tom. This is an example of where you've done the homework of calculating for yourself what your best options were. And you, in the moment, get, get, you know, feel like, oh, I really don't wanna, you know, I really don't wanna just, you know, I, I, I don't know why I went against my better judgment, um, but I had a sound logic in, in you know, this line and I went against it. So as you can see, that forced my night back, lost me essentially two tempo. And the whole next few moves, I mean, I, I got fortunate here, but I got to this point where I finally started an initiative. But boy, if I didn't, if I wasn't able to pull through, Tom would have just gradually but surely squelched my position. Um, so, so to recap on that moment, uh, instead of that, even before castling, what I should have done is something like this. Um, because this adds another attacker in here. So now, of course, you see there's two pieces attacking it. So now if the pawn takes, I can take it back. So the best move here for white would be something like the queen. Uh, but again, this spot is looking really pretty whenever I want to use my knight to go there. And um, I just, I really wouldn't, I, as weird as this is to say, I wouldn't prefer white here. I really wouldn't. Um, the bishop I can... Done, I probably would have done bishop to c4 instead of the queen move. Bishop to c4? Yeah. Oh, sorry, bishop to c4. Yeah, because then you have both your bishop and your queen guarding it for now, and you have options. Uh, the problem with I mean, that is, what's that? Pawn move. I was going to say pawn move could happen. Oh, sorry. So is, is this what no, you No, 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 your pawn move. Oh, OK, sorry. So let's go back here. Ah, let me go back. So here, and you said bishop, right? Yeah, and then I was thinking b5. Yeah, but why not just this? Oh, yeah, you could just take there. I, that's the whole reason why my bishop was defending there. You're right. So, um, but again, like, so I mean, like, yeah, the, probably, probably yeah, push the pawn then. Yeah, so like basically, you know, if I it's had still done, not good. I'm still breaking up my pawn structure. I know. So th my point is, my my sound judgment like was based on a long time thinking about the line, and I just totally went against it when I took your knight. Um, yeah. So that was unfortunate because it really made it hard for me for a good ten moves or so um, until I was able to develop some sort of counterplay. Um, okay, so in the game, keeping on going get to this point, I finally decide, okay, I gotta expand on that queen, or on the king side, because I, right now I, I need more space. Okay, all right, so at this point, at this point, I actually had in mind to go boom, take, take. So my whole goal here was kind of tunnel vision focus to get that strong bishop off the board with my knight. And so uh, as soon as that move came in where he's, uh, where he's threatening to take this one, then I'm gonna go right there. And you better believe I'm gonna take it with my knight if he takes that, and he did. So now I'm connected with the bishop and at any point I can take it. And he, he agreed with me in the sense of that threat being valid. So um, that, was, that was what I could have done. And then, okay, so then we get to this point where we exchange bishops. I get my queen there. Now, at this point, Tom and I mentioned when we were discussing this initially that uh, at least kind of the way I saw it is when the, when the position played out and we get to you know, this point, there is essentially the way the game will go and the direction it'll take is contingent upon two major threats. My threat is based on getting this pawn to turn into a, a, a greater threat with the advance of the other pawn. So I'm trying to control the F file. That's kind of my, my focus. Tom's threat, one of them anyway, is if he can somehow use this knight maneuver supported by his pawn to either create a pass pawn or to just dominate my position with all the you know, squares he's controlling. So again, if either of us are able to accomplish that purpose, then, then it'll certainly help us in our endeavor. Um, and so this point, uh, was my third critical moment and final one. Uh, the reason why I chose this one is because 
as I already mentioned, when my night was back at its starting place right here, I had an intention to at some point take the, the bishop off the board. And at that point, it was a pretty good, you know, pretty good idea. We both recognized that was, that was pretty decent. However, in this position, something has changed. A queen is now in a more centralized location, which she is stronger in, but also can be more susceptible to tactics. And so in this case, what if I did this? And in this case, um, Tom already mentioned that this, what, moving the bishop here uh, was actually an inaccuracy or mistake, I can't remember which was. Um, and so I had one move, one opportunity to exploit that uh, mistake, to punish it. And this move here is, as you can see it, uh, it maybe if you didn't see that it first, it's hitting the queen, plus it opens up uh, uh, hitting the knight with an attack on the king. So, uh, you know, again, there's, you can't parry both of these threats simultaneously um, without uh, consequences. So the best move in this position is, because, you know, how do you take your queen away from that square while still guarding the knight? Well, that's the only square. So after you go there, then you get to this point, which, okay, so looking at right here, it's, again, it, it can be a little tricky to see, but the best, the best continuation is actually to take the knight. The problem is, after we get to this point, now all, when all the dust has settled, what are we left with? We're left with, I have the exchange up on Tom, and I have the rooks and bishop versus the minor pieces and rook. So now, again, I have doubled pawns, you know, his pawn structure is better than mine. But if I play solid chess and we both, you know, play well, then I will go on to win the end game. Um, so, yeah, so I, I would say in conclusion with this game, uh, and, you know, we, we got to the dynamic line that Tom mentioned earlier, um, which he did a good job of, you know, articulating all the nuances. But um, so I won't digress there. But basically, for me, the biggest takeaways of this game were number one, I need to diminish my defensive passive moves in the opening because I noticed that that tends to be a bad habit of mine. Um, and so it's, it's the opposite of what Tom was saying. <laughs> Tom and I are literally opposite in that way, uh, which, is kind of, which is why this channel is so invigorating because um, the idea here is if I go back to, um, to the uh, position where this happened for me real quickly. Um, so back at the beginning, once we get to this point um, where I decide to make this really dumb pawn move, that's, that's just one example of this. There are, there are others too. Um, so that's my first takeaway is don't make so many passive moves at the beginning of the game. You know, focus on natural development. Number two, when I spend a bunch of time and strategy, uh, you know, when I'm creating a game plan, I need to not let momentary fears derail my plan, such as what happened in well, you guess it, once you get to this point and all of a sudden his knight comes in here and we castle, taking this was exactly against what my better judgment had already calculated. I already spent all that time and I wasted it by that move. Um, so that was my second takeaway. My third takeaway is don't get stuck on tunnel vision because if I look in the other critical moment where we get to this point and I had already intended to go over here and take his bishop while that was a sound you know sound logic at the time once the queen gets in the centralized position i missed a tactic because i failed to look for other options um, and just stuck with my tunnel vision focus and i could have had a much easier time had i uh looked at other options um so yeah so that those are my three key takeaways and yeah it was a it was very interesting all right well, thanks for that, Luke. And uh, our next uh, our next little segment here that we do is we took a game and we uh, we analyzed uh, a couple of players. Um, uh, game uh, one of them was ranked like twenty five hundred, right? Yeah, it was like a super GM level almost. Yeah, and the other, but the other was ranked uh, about eighteen hundred. Um, yep. And you're, you're going to see the difference in play between the two. Uh, it gets pretty wild. Um, uh, so the higher rated player, uh, was black who ends up winning as we'll see.
Um, but I uh, can't start. So with E4. Okay, so and then after the E4, then we get to the exact position that we are in this game, which was the Sicilian. So I'm going to play C C5. Um, so far the same, but then black response a little different. Um, and this leads into a um, little, little different gameplay. Um, so for defense there. Um, only now do we see this pawn coming forward. Mm -hmm. A little later than usual, but but now we've arrived at the open Sicilian position, the most common position in all of chess openings. Uh, so then, <clears throat> kicking the knight. Okay, and then just a simple, quiet development move. <clears throat> so here we're actually really similar to where we uh, we were in the game. Yeah, it's really similar. Uh, then we start to see a few different ideas develop. And then, um, yeah, so then after that, then we have this very interesting thing where you see all the bishops lined up and the... Okay, and then I'm going to move a simple rook move. Uh, and here we see of what happened in our game. Offering the exchange option for white. Yep. But I think white knew that, you know, he didn't really, you know, by doing that, it would bring the black queen out, so. Yeah, the, and the analysis does say that that is, that is the best move. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, I can definitely see you know the threat of this queen coming out, and the the fact that this rook ends up here in this position, right? There's a lot of pressure that's coming down on the queen side of the white. Yeah, it's it's hard to know for white how to proceed. Uh, so uh, what white ends up doing is defending with the queen. And the problem with that is it brings the queen into a very central location, which right now there's so many pieces on the board. There's a lot of tactics. And this is where the tactics begin here shortly. Hitting both here and here. Yep. And this was also a mistake. Yeah. So now this is this is the really exciting line that I would have definitely not seen in this position. But yeah. initially it looks like okay, well, you're just giving a free pawn, but yeah. Ooh, cool. Free pawn, right? But then after this happens, notice how this queen can't continue to guard this bishop because here the rook comes in and that's all you have. Yeah. There the rook's in. There the rook's in. It's, it's bad. So, uh, this is what white ends up doing. Taking the, the bishop. <clears throat> so then just trying to pick those knights and just watch these knights how they play because they're... I know. The knights are just incredible all uh, the way they work. So now it's so now it's oops, now it's attacking this pawn, right? The white pawn with a rook. Yeah. <clears throat> and then at this point, once the queen doubles up with the rook, you know, you can see how white is just trying to struggle to even know how to defend, let alone do anything yeah. productive. And then it's like, okay, these knights have caused me so much trouble. <laughs> I'm getting one of them. But then a pawn drops. <laughs> it's the sad. queen's undefended okay <laughs> and you really don't want the rook on the seventh rank we all know this yeah. i do think capturing there was the was the best move but i agree but it's it still look good <laughs> no no because then they're just going to double up with c8 yep you know? and so at this point then guess what well another pawn drops <laughs> and those knights those knights are just so deadly so now the queen moved one time already, moving again. And a knight drops. I mean, this is just looking hopeless. <laughs> yep. Uh, so then we see finally uh, getting to take off one of these pesky knights. Uh, and the other pesky knight. That's, 
that's the one victory I guess White gets is finally being able to take out those awful, awful knights. Yeah. Uh, from here, the king is in check. It's all over about the crying. And, and, that's the and yeah, and we, Tom and I mentioned how we love this idea with the whole idea with the bishop coming here was to actually bring and connect with the pawn. Yeah. It's, it's so nice there. I mean, you've really, you've really neutered um, this, this whole relationship. <laughs> uh, you, it's such a strong position for the bishop. Um, yeah, so White, White does this, um, just defending from that back row mate. Yep. Being threatened. And now we come to the end of the road. And that is the last move that occurred. Uh, yeah, it's it's game over there. So. You know, I, Tom, I think one thing that's interesting, I don't know if you picked up on this too, but, um, you know, we mentioned about how the knights were just harassing, but I feel like a lot of times in Sicilian, early on, the knights do tend to be a little bit of a nuisance for, um, for either party, depending on how, just specifically in the Sicilian. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's always thematic of, of Sicilian positions, but at least the open ones, the knights are very pivotal pieces when it comes to the, you know, developing the, getting into the mid game, you know, from the yeah. opening. And, you know, one of the, one of the big lessons that I learned um, within this last year is there's really, you know, we talk about those, those knights and those bishops a lot in the uh, in that opening, in the opening sequence. Um, I, I, I want to say it was uh, uh, better chess for beginners or something like that. I, I should, I'm going to get the book title. I'll put it in the comments, but. Oh, chess tactics for champions or. I, I'll show you. I'll, I'll, oh I'll, yeah. The I mean, end games for beginners. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 um, uh, one of the things that it said in, it, it said in the book is there's a whole dynamic between the Bishop and the Knights that's really occurring in that, in the opening and mid game. And that's what it's really about. It's this battle between Knights and Bishops. Um, and it's, uh, it's something that a lot of uh, novice players aren't really even that aware of, that it's happening. Um, and so if you can really start to engage uh, in those knight-bishop battles, uh, it'll, it'll really help to improve your game if you are not already doing so. Yeah, well said. Cool. Well, um, yeah, I mean, obviously we learned a lot and I hope you guys did watching us and uh, you can probably tell by even the way we're kind of going about these analyses, uh, how much we've improved over the last few months. Um, it's, it's pretty exciting. Um, you know, I don't know if Tom, if you want to share, we've both gone uh, higher in our ratings than we ever have before. Um, and I had the privilege of actually beating a national master. It was kind of a random game, but that was and someone over rated over 2000 again, few and far between, but these are all evidences that we are definitely um, continuing to get better in assessing positions and our pattern recognition. So, you know, as we always say, keep on practicing and you'll watch your game improve. All right. Thanks guys. See you next time. Bye.